Okay, so I recently tested the Alexa 35 compared with the camera that I've been using a lot over the past year and a half, two years, the one and only Alexa Mini LF. The whole thing was really quick. It was shot in like an hour. We're gonna look at dynamic range, a quick touch on the different frame sizes and where the two cameras clip. Both cameras were set to the same exact settings for every single shot and one shot was shot directly after the other. Airy Raw, open gate, both cameras. We rated the cameras at 1600 because Roger Deakins shot 1917 and 1600, so the 35 actually can gain more stops in the highlights above 1600, as can the Mini LF, but 1600 is what I chose. Shot on a signature prime 47mm T1.8 the whole time. Same settings all the way through. Both cameras were in the same exact position on the same tripod. Shoot one shot switch it out, bring the other one in, shoot the same shot. We're gonna just look at the footage real quick, 30 seconds, and then we're gonna dive deeper and take a look at it in result. I am about to miss my flight to New York, so I will see you there. Hello. <clears throat> All right, there was a lot of stuff there, even though there were only three shots, but we're gonna look at it a little closer here. Uh, first, we have straight off the camera. Uh, this is full frame open gate on the Mini LF and on the 35. The shadows are kind of in the same spot. Mini LF, low point right here, and the same low point for the Alexa 35. And then back into Rec 709, low point right here, low point right here. We see that the Alexa 35 is darker overall, but it has a lot more highlight latitude, which we just saw and we'll go into a little further in a second. So for the Alexa 35, we just have a Rec 709 LUT from Aerie and for the Mini LF, we have a color space transform from Log C3 to Log C4 and the same LUT as the 35. Here we have the same shot from both cameras, Mini LF and Alexa 35. Mini LF 35. An exposure adjustment with the HDR wheels mapped to log C3, just to get these more in the same ballpark. Okay, moving on. So for these shots, we had the ND change each time. So ND 1.8, 1 1.2, 1 0.6, and clear. And then the same on the 35, ND 1.8, 1 1.2, 1 0.6, clear. So I felt that 1.2 was looking good. In 1.8, we brought up the exposure, two stops with mapped HDR wheels. This is the Mini LF. 1.2 ND, no exposure adjustment. 0.6 ND, minus two exposure adjustment. This is what it is with just the Rec. 709. And with minus two, and ND clear right off the camera, and drop down four stops. So you can see we are clipping when we go to clear yeah, we're clipping here at 0.6 ND as well. So the Mini LF starts clipping at ND 0.6 and obviously is clipped at no ND. But one thing to look at here is this is clipped information right here. We can see in the log, it is definitely clipped, but still looks pretty good. Granted, this was an overcast day, so it was just you know thick clouds out here, but we'll move on to the 35. We'll look at just the log. ND 1.8, 1.2, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.
0.6 starts to clip. You can see in the trees here and clear is just totally gone. And we'll take a look at the 35, ND 1.8, 1.2, 0 0.6, and clear. Mini LF at 0.6, 35 at 0.6. Take a look at the details here. Mini LF is clipping at 0.6 ND, the 35 is not. And we can see this in the scopes. This is the Mini LF, 35. And then even further, we can look at no ND, this is the Mini LF, and this is the 35. And we'll just take another look at what open gate looks like on both cameras. This is the Mini LF and the Alexa 35. All right, that's about it. Great new camera from Airy. The extra dynamic range is truly incredible. This was a quick test during Thanksgiving. Had about an hour to get this done. In the beginning, the 35 had an ND filter issue, which was fixed in a firmware update, so nothing to worry about there. But if that happens on the 35, you can access the ND filters manually by pulling a plate off the bottom, and you can put a Allen key in there and manually adjust where the NDs are, which is a great thing, a great improvement, a great addition to that camera to be able to do that just in case anything happens because that is a complex mechanical thing that's going on in there. So if you're out in the field and you something happens, it's good to be able to adjust that manually with the turn of a key. All right, I gotta go. Besides the dynamic range, which we will take a look at in a minute, just being able to put a battery on the back of this is my other favorite feature of this camera. I hate handheld, you know that about me. I know.